by the power of Skywire! Play the intro. Hello and welcome back to another From the Workshop. I am your host, as always, Brandon Hart. And this time we're in a very special location. Yeah, it's the Nimbleink Nerd Lair. It's always special. But this time, we're going to talk to you about something that's a little bit different from uh, the kind of the general cellular technology discussions we've been having. Um, this one really kind of focuses on a question and a common topic that we've been getting from a lot of customers and we've been seeing in a lot of new designs and people just getting started working with a, a Skywire modem, uh, trying to design it in and, and get it working and, and that kind of thing. Um, so we're really going to focus on power and what you need to do to appropriately power these things. Um, these are cellular radios and they are going to draw a, a significant amount of power. Um, even, even these little guys down here, the low power M1 guys are, are still going to draw a significant amount of power when you are in the full high power transmit mode. Um, fundamentally it's an LTE radio. And so, um, you know, over a certain amount of time, the total power draw for something like this will be a lot lower because you'll do things like, uh, implementing power save mode and utilizing EDRX and you know putting these things in in the lowest power modes they can get to but when they are transmitting they are still LTE radios so the power requirements and the power design uh, uh, suggestions that we're going to give you really apply to the entire Skywire modem family so that being said um, it doesn't just apply to Skywire it applies really to all cellular radios. We don't really add a whole lot in terms of overhead and, and drawing extra power or anything in the Skywire modem. These are intended to be uh, as simple as possible, to, to not add a whole lot of overhead that's unnecessary. So just a, a quick note to, to kind of say, while we're going to focus on Skywire, these, these suggestions really apply to all cellular radios. Cool. Okay. Um, so when you are designing your uh, new device or you're getting the circuit kind of prototyped up and, and, and designed out, there are some things that you need to know in terms of the power you need to provide. And this applies whether you're talking about, you know, these little tiny battery powered things that are mostly going to be in a low power scenario and mostly in power save mode and all those kind of things to different sorts of LiPo and, and even the big lead acid battery it's not that heavy <laughs> the lead acid uh, uh types of batteries with their extended you know extended deployment times things like that and ac power you know you plug in these things into the wall all of this applies the first thing that i'll say is read the data sheet <laughs> really need to read the manual uh when you're designing for a specific skywire modem all the information you need to know is in there one of the first things you're going to see when you do that is that these radios are going to pull one and a half amps in some cases. Um, so really that's what your minimum should be in terms of, of uh, the current, in terms of amperage um, that is being provided to that power pin, pin one, on the Skywire modems. And that's assuming roughly 3.8 volts and depending upon which modem we're talking about, that voltage range could be anywhere from a 3.3 .3 to a 5 volt range, or it might be a little bit narrower um, and just kind of focused around that 3.8 volt range. Again, refer to the data sheet to figure out which one of those, the particular modem you're working with, falls into. Um, but yeah, 1.5 amps is really the minimum that you need to design in. We prefer and would recommend that you design in actually two amps of, of current into your circuit. Basically what that's gonna do for you is if you use a two amp circuit, the components and everything in your circuit design is going to be less stressed and able to deliver a much more stable and reliable current 
to the uh, to the modem itself as it's getting into those higher power modes. So you can get away with 1.5 amps, really recommend two amps. That may seem like a lot, but remember, it's really about when the modems are pulling the power in those transmit modes. Um, the other thing is, uh, I'm just gonna, I'll put up a graphic here real quick so you can see, but um, when we are testing and characterizing the power draw of these modems, we have seen a, a very bursty, very spiky type of, of current draw. Um, so these things are not constant current draw for, for very much time at all. Very, very short bursts of very high power draw and then right back down again. And because of that, our suggestion is to use a switching power supply. Uh, switching power supplies are able to respond much more quickly. They're able to keep up with those spikes that are, are, are um, present in the power draw of all the modems. Again, this is all of them. They all behave in this exact same manner. Um, so LDOs are great, but LDOs tend to be kind of inefficient, especially on the lower power side where you're trying to get as much power as you possibly can out of your radio running off of a battery. Um, and they tend to be slower to respond. So you may have a little bit of a dip in, in, uh, in the power supply, the current supply to the modem. Switching power supplies, you don't really have that problem. Um, one thing I will say though is switching power supplies can sometimes introduce a little bit of noise. However, if you follow the manufacturer recommendations for the design of how that switching supply is, is uh, implemented in your design, shouldn't really be a problem for you. Uh, they're going to show you exactly, you know, what kind of caps and, and resistors and passives that you need in order to ensure that that electrical noise is not introduced into your circuit, doesn't affect the Skywire modems. So there you go. Switching power supply is definitely the way to go. LDOs, just not as efficient, not as responsive, and, uh, and generally not recommended for cellular designs and specifically Skywire. Um, the other thing that can help out a lot of times with those spikes and with that rapid power draw may seem obvious to you, but designing in capacitors. And we specifically recommend at least, again, that minimum of 100 microfarad capacitor and, and put that guy right up next to the socket. So if you see on any of our designs here, those capacitors are right up next to that power pin. And, and right in front of the power pin too in the circuit design. So that is gonna get you the best performance of those capacitors um, to that power pin and, and help smooth out those bursts of power draw uh, so that you don't have any issues in terms of unreliability or bad performance of the modem. Again, 100 microfarads is the minimum. Just like with the amperage, we do have a recommendation for higher than that. If you can design in 200 microfarads, you're going to be better off. It's, you're going to get better performance. It's going to work better overall. So 100 microfarads minimum, 200 maximum, right up next to the pin, right in front of it in the circuit design, and you're going to be uh, pretty well off there. The other thing we see a lot of times when people are getting started is they have some trouble kind of implementing the design. Maybe they weren't really... Um, uh, thinking about the fact that these are RF devices and um, you know any interference can cause problems and so they put it into a breadboard. Normally with most components that's perfectly fine. Breadboards are awesome, really great for quick prototyping and things like that, but these being cellular radios the inductance that is caused from the spring clips um, so basically between the spring clips themselves can cause a lot of issues in the power domain. So put the rest of your circuit in the, in the breadboard, perfectly cool with that. But the Skywire modem can, should really go in something like a Skywire development kit. Put it in here, the power supply, the power circuit is essentially taken care of. It is a known good supply and the known good circuit, not gonna cause any additional issues, and then simply pin out from this into your breadboard 
for the signals. So your processor, your microcontroller, whatever, can send the necessary signals and talk to the Skywire modem without causing any additional RF noise and, and problems associated with that. So I really can't recommend breadboards for Skywire modems. Rest of your circuit is fine, but use a known good configuration for that. In fact, start with this. <laughs> Even before you do the rest of it, just start with a Skywire development kit. Again, known good working configuration. If, if you start kind of launching right into designing a special circuit and, and interfacing your microcontroller to the, to the uh, Skywire modem or using a, a, a I don't know, a hand-built adapter board or, or something, then there are too many variables for things that could possibly not, not be set up correctly the very first time. We know these work. We know these work well. This will help you uh, determine kind of how the modem is responding, what signals you need to send it, how to talk to it, and so on. So highly recommend start with that. If something stops working properly, take your modem out, put it back in the Skywire development kit and see if there's something wrong with the modem that, that, that happened during the course of your design. It's, it's not unheard of to brick a modem sometimes. So this is a way to check it. It's also a good way to update the firmware too, but that's another video. <laughs> um, okay, so speaking of known good configurations and known good designs, you see I've got a number of different development kits out here and, and some of the custom boards that we've done as well. These are, again, known good power circuits, known good supplies. Um, and part of what we do to kind of make things easy to work with and, and easy to get started and quick to market is give you the assistance that you need in order to get your custom circuit up and running. To do that, the design files for all of our various different adapter boards, these and more, are available on the product pages for each one of these dev kits and adapter boards. So because we've already implemented individual power supplies on each one of these boards, you can literally reference the existing circuit that we've put together in your design. You could straight copy it into your design. We even make the uh, schematics, the bombs, the uh, Ultium design files, everything's out there. So you don't even have to try to figure out how to do it. You can just simply use what we've already done. So that makes it even easier. And then the last thing I'll mention, and then we'll wrap this up here, is the antennas. The antennas don't have a direct effect on the power you're supplying to the device. But what the antennas do is um, can pick up any of that noise we were talking about earlier that might be introduced by the switching power supply or, or you know, anything else in your circuit, perhaps. So you really want those cables for the power supply or for the uh, antenna to be away from your power circuit as much as you can. Don't let this little antenna cable here maybe you know droop over an inductor or droop over the the switching supply or anything like that because it's going to introduce noise into the cable even if it's not introducing noise into your circuit and that'll affect the performance of the antenna as well so not really about the power supply itself more about the antenna but it can be affected by the power supply if the antenna placement is a little off and the antenna manufacturer for whatever antenna you're using will give you recommendations for how to place the antenna. So again, you know, read the documentation and, and it'll show you where to put it and uh, give you a lot of guidance on the right way to set that up too. Okay, so that's a lot of information about one single topic, just kind of designing in the appropriate power supply for the Skywire modem. I hope it's helpful. Again, I know I've said it a couple times, but please do refer to the documentation as you are implementing your design so that anything that wasn't covered in this video or uh, anything that's specific to maybe the individual modem that you're working with is uh, included in that information. But with that, I will say thank you very much. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Um, we'd, we'd love to see what you guys think. Uh, we also have an email address, so if you don't want it out there on the YouTubes, then you can email it to us. 
I think it's, I think this is the bottom of the screen here. So right there is the email address, workshop at nimblelink.com. And until then, we'll see you in the next From the Workshop. Have fun building.